fog, a school, a classroom. You would have to remove all the books on the bookshelves. You'd have to remove any paper. You'd have to completely remove every object from all of the surfaces because it's a wet solution. Um, you would go in, you would tape up all of the windows, all of the exits, all of the doors. Um, and then you basically go in with hazmat. You run around with a fogger that produces a very wet disinfectant to the whole room. Um, generally costs about £6,000 to do as well. Um, and then a day later, after it's all settled, a professional cleaning company has to go in and then basically suck all the moisture out and clean all the surfaces again. So it's a very invasive closure business then. This one is a dry product. It converts the liquid into a gas and then the gas becomes lighter on air and travels with the air. So anywhere the air gets to, inside a toilet, under a toilet seat, everything, this will get to it. And it leaves behind almost an invisible white powder, which is basically a product that if any germs land on it, it will kill them as well. But a fogger is wet, it's hazardous, um, it's a great solution for certain things, but it's something you only want to be doing once in a blue moon because it's £6,000 a go. It's not a good thing. Um, and, and that's the beauty, I suppose, of the smart mister as well, is that you can be in the room when it, I mean, obviously it, it, it gives a miss, but you can be in the room um, when, when it's on. Uh, there's obviously lots of health benefits as well to, to actually, you know, skin. So in the States, this chemical HOTI has an organic label because effectively there is no chemicals used in it. It's just all the things you would find in the ocean. Um, so it has an organic label that's safe. It's also sold separately as things like skincare products to remove fungal infections and kill bacteria. It's sold to clean your eyes, so you squirt it in your eyes. It's sold to remove bad breath. In racehorses, it's used to increase the lung capacity. It has many, many uses. But in our case, what we've done is we've taken an off the shelf product from um, an ex-Panasonic company that manufactures products for Panasonic. They make a humidifier. We bought a batch from them that is modified so that it runs with um, HLCI. So you can't use it as a humidifier anymore, it would break. Um, but I think what we've done is take a standard humidifier, which brings the cost down. If we had to tool up, make a version of this, it would cost us a fortune. Whereas we take a normal one, we modify it. We then modify it so that it can give out the hydrochloric acid as a gas. Um, and then away it goes. So we end up with a safe product that is food safe. It can land on an apple and oranges that people leave out in the office. It doesn't change the taste. Um, it stops moles and bacteria growing and things. Um, and, and it, but it, it can over time leave a slight residue. It's about three months. So if you never, if you use this every single day and you never clean the office because you're convinced that this is a cleaning thing and this doesn't replace your cleaning process, this just complements that you should still use this, wipe the residue off. If you never clean it off after about three months, you start to notice a white powder on top of objects. So if you've got a, a black phone and it's been lying in the wrong place, you'll see a white powder. You can run your fingers over the white powder and eat it. Anything that lands on it, bacteria will die. So it's a good thing. It just looks unsightly. Um, but that white powder um, is incredibly fine. You normally just hoover up or wipe off uh, and it goes. Um, but, yeah, but it takes about three months to build up. Okay, and I suppose that's the thing. It doesn't. It never. This this product will never take away from your. Uh, this is sanitizing the room and sanitizing the office. It's not cleaning the office. Yeah. So if if, if somebody spilt something, it still needs wiping up in the same way that over time the residue will need. Um, so, so if somebody was to leave a coffee cup out and they had a milky coffee, then you would expect after about two days there'd be um, blue spores in the coffee cup. So you have a brown mush and blue spores coming from it because bacteria grows. So if someone spills a bit of milk on a carpet or a surface, then that can grow more bacteria and create more 
building blocks for viruses and other things for spores. Whereas if you were to leave a coffee cup on this, there would be no spores. It basically would um, sanitize it in such a way that there's no breeding ground. There's a test that is done for hospitals and operating theatres called ATP test. Um, and an ATP test basically has one of these things, a swab, that you swab an area and then you send it off to a lab. I only charge you, before, before all the pandemic, about £200 for a test result. Now people seem to charge you about £2,000 for a test result, get the result back in two days. If you do that, it will tell you how many building blocks for life forms are on your desk, on your surface. And that is used as the government level um, and you, at World Health Organization levels um, quality control for how something is clean. So if you want to know, is this device um, regulated? Is this device going to pass every test throwing at it? Then you basically just send it off to a lab and that does a test for it. It's what we've proven as well. Um, I presume so. All the um, standards that this this uh, the smart mister has been um, that's adhered to and, and gone through um, proves that it kills all those known viruses that that we've talked about um, within. Yep. Within. It's done that in the food industry, holding food like smoking kippers and then holding them for production. It's done that for twenty to fifty years, so it's proven, well documented, and used all over the world for that now. In an office environment, this hasn't been used before. We're kind of one of the first ones. Um, some people have used it as a squirt product that you squirt onto your desk and then basically wipe it down. Um, but that can leave gaps and it's only as good as the cloth that you use, where that cloth is full of some of these wiped up spilt beans, we then spread that over. So this is a, a slightly different thing and the the BS numbers and the regulation numbers are very, very new. So some of them are official and some are non-official. Some don't start until next year. And then we're comply to all of the old ones. And then the new ones that are coming out, we're making sure that we comply to the new ones that come in that are COVID-19 to COVID-21 related for next year. Um, so we're already ahead of the game on that. Okay. We would, have we mentioned obviously what this product is. Um, are there, is there anything similar on the market? Um, not that I can find for the same purpose. I found people that do it as um, they do a, a homemade version of this that is used to um, get rid of acne, and then they do a version that's used to. Um, person to person as a skin um, problem reliever thing, but nothing that sanitizes an office. The closest to it is you get some factory fogging machines that with a certain type of air purification system as well, deliver a certain thing, but you're always into about 20,000 pounds for yeah. those as opposed to hundreds of pounds. So no yeah. one I can find that's doing this yet. So as far as maintenance is concerned of one of these then, so what, what would be um, what we need to do as far as maintenance is concerned? Um, I try to make it as maintenance free as possible. There is no moving parts in this. There's a HEPA filter that um, might need to be changed in a bad environment every year, um, maybe every two years. Um, so there's a little filter on the back of it. There's a sensor on the back of the unit uh, down here that you might have to just clean. And from time to time, that, that measures the humidity and the temperature in the room. So that if you've got multiples of these in a, say, a corridor, and you've got one here doing 30 cubic meters, and someone puts the next one right next to it, just for some reason, unknown reason, then the sensor will um, adjust the flow rate of the second one. So you may have to clean that. The insides, you basically lift the lid and every time it's empty and the app will tell you when it's empty, you lift this out and then you clean the insides with a cloth and a, something that looks like a toothbrush. Um, and you do that after 
every five litres that goes through. If you do that, it will last for many, many years. If you don't do that and you just allow it to get dirtier, then right now it's nearly 100% efficient. In a year's time, you might be 80% efficient because it's clogged up in the inside. You don't have the same flow rate. So you'd have to clean it or you would have to run it for longer. Um, it's a simple cleaning process that in the, the manual we've documented that basically you just have um, isoprethanol to clean the device, a big toothbrush and some lint-free cloths and you clean it in an order. Um, just takes about two minutes each time. As long as you do that, life's good. And then dust off any residue that's lying around. Basically, so to fill it up, I presume it is you just take the lid off, uh, take the take the unit out, and literally fill with the uh, with the salvasan or the. You literally, when it's empty, it tells you it's empty. Take the lid off, put it upside down, unscrew the filler, and then blunt, 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 five liters of tank into it. The device holds five point three liters. When it says it's empty, it will accept another five litres and there's a little bit of extra in the reservoir at the bottom. So you can just fill up another five litres straight into it. Okay. And normal use, that will give you 31 days. So it, it, 30 cubic metres running one hour a day at normal British temperatures, that um, should be 31 days. So every 31 days, you give it a light clean. Um, and there's not much more to the cleaning than that. Right. So it's more, this produces a mist and more of the cleaning is on the surfaces. It's just wiping off the residue, like you should be doing anyway. Yeah, exactly. But so this would be on a, so this would be on a timer through, uh, so this works through an app as um, a lot of things do nowadays. Um, and how many machines could you have on this at one time? So you could literally, could you look after our office at the same time? Because of just, just so you know, Ray's down at our, our head office down in Finch Hampstead and I'm um, at our Bradford office. So would you be able to do, to, to sort the Bradford office at the same time as the Finch Hampstead? Yes, um, I can have a, a central app. We don't have a website yet, but thinking of making that if people want it. But we have a, an app, Android and Apple, that you can then touch Office 1, Office 2, location, whatever, click it. It then shows you the humidity, the sanitizer that's in the air, um, the timers and gives you options that you can set. And then you can press schedule and set up a schedule from it. Um, and then basically turn it on or off remotely. Okay, for however long you want it on or, or don't you? Yeah. At whichever office. So if, if for example, the, the guys at the Bradford office getting a bit earlier, so it comes on earlier over here and different times over at Finch Hampstead. Yeah. The app, one of the, the interesting things on the app is the exception list. You might get, say, a time where the, um, the electrician wants to go and do maintenance in an office and is going to, say, replace lights with LED lights overnight. So they've asked if you can turn off the device on a Tuesday evening so that when the electricians are working, it's not full of mist and they can't see. So last minute, no one's thought about it. You can basically just go into an app and go off even if it's scheduled to come on, you can override that one site. So if you get an exception, like someone wants to work in the office over the 24 hours, big job to get out or something, or doing maintenance, you can use the app from wherever you are in the country, as long as you've got internet, to turn it on or off. You can also just reduce the um, amount in the room so that it still does a job, but it doesn't do as good a job it's more like a top up type thing. So we've got people like the um, a dentist, a dentist practice that wants to turn it on every 30 minutes and they turn it on for five minutes and it does a top up in the, the room. Mm -hmm. So they use the app when they manage to get a moment when the office is empty or something and they go click on and then do a quick top up of it. Just a, just a question from uh, Patricia is the, um, I don't know whether you've heard this way because it's kind of off the cuff on this one, but there's a, on the internet, there's a machine called a CM100 disinfecting misting machine. Um, I don't know that you've heard of it and what's the difference. If, obviously, if you haven't heard of it, then we'll, we'll look it up afterwards and we'll, we'll get back to Patricia, but I just wondered if you had heard of it. I haven't heard of that one unless you, 
show me a picture of it and I recognise it's one of the ones I've seen. You can buy Chinese, um, Taiwan and China have disinfectant machines that you basically just pour in water and salt and it makes hydrochloric acid in real time. And they're used to disinfect plants. So they're, you put them in a the kitchen and they're great at encouraging plants to grow so that you can eat the plants. And Samsung make them, LG make them and things. So they're a product that does that, but they only cover about a surface area of one to two meters. And the sanitizer, sorry, they, they don't use a sanitizer, they use a disinfectant, which is different. Um, only lasts for roughly speaking half an hour, whereas this will stay for 14 hours. And, and if I close this room and don't open the doors, like a fogging machine, this will stay in the atmosphere for 48 hours. So the machines that you see like that are um, generators generally of hydrochloric acid and they're cheap things. They're generally about 40 to 60 pounds um, turn up from China and they do a job. But if you were to get a, an insurance company to come in to say, my office has been sanitized, they wouldn't conform to any regulations whatsoever. They put a disinfectant in, which is very different. Um, that's that's, that, and that's what's great about the, the sensor because you can see it going off now as well to let you know what's going on in the building. You can see that the sensor is going off so you can actually see what the mister is doing. Um, got a question from Terry. Um, they've got, they, they use foggy machines and sanitizers. Uh, that are available to them, that, they rec that, that they've that they been told that they can return to the room after one hour. Um, so just wondering what's your take on this, Ray? I don't know, Terry, you can let us know what type, what the machine's called, so we can look at that as well afterwards. So if it's a fogger, um, you can set a fogger off and then you can stay in the room um, and generally be okay. If you're doing a fogger and you're trying to get to one of the regulations to say that this room has been sanitized, it's clinically clean. It's illegal to stay in the room because the particle density has to be so high that it would overwhelm your lungs. So you need breathing apparatus. Returning into the room depends on ventilation, depends on many, many, many things and how long it's on. But if you want to, I can buy a, a fogger um, which are designed to grow mushrooms, originally most foggers, um, ultrasonic atomizers. They fog water into a fine mist that makes mushrooms grow. You put a disinfectant in that and then it fogs out. Those devices, you won't get to a government regulation and still be able to use it after one hour. And if you do, you're going to cause quite a lot of problems trying. Um, it's not a good thing to do. So if you're only using it for show and it turns on, you produce a wet mist that goes around, uh, it pours off, that's fine. It'll kill most bacteria, funguses and spores dead within uh, one to three seconds and it will be good for that. But it won't stay on a surface and it won't last and it wouldn't pass the ATC test. So if you did the official test of that afterwards, it wouldn't pass. Okay. I could go into that subject for hours and hours. <laughs> but most of the, um, as, as far as maintenance is concerned, um, does it tell you when it needs maintaining? I'm presuming mm -hmm. we've said before, haven't we, that it's once every how many months based on usage? Well, the, the cleaning of it, I recommend you should do this monthly. Um, we've been using one of these in our office for four months and I have not cleaned it once. So we've got one of them that we deliberately have not cleaned in any way. And then I've got a, a gas analyzer that I'm measuring the particles per million that are coming out to find out if the um, efficiency is degrading for not cleaning it. And in, in the four months, it's still up at 99.9% .9 efficient. So you don't really have to clean it every month, but it's, if you do, it'll be a really good thing. And it's very easy to clean when you're changing the whole reservoir because it's empty anyway. So it's easy just to have a room with a cloth. Um, so in my opinion, you should do a more regular maintenance. But 
as long as you do a maintenance on a regular basis, every three months or every something, then life's good. It's just you get people that will think it's working. I don't need to touch it. Mm-hmm. And when they go back to it in a year's time, find the inside has got lots of crystals that are incredibly difficult to break off. You end up with a hammer and chisel. Whereas if you wipe it every month or every three months, then they just literally come off in your fingers. So, so it can be almost done on, a, on an almost contract type basis as far as, um, you know, if a, if a dealer was to sell this out to their customers. I yeah. To say, um, you know, once as long as there is a regular maintenance period, then we're happy for warranties and extended warranties. If no one does any maintenance to it, then we worry about, you know, how long it's going to last. It'll guarantee to last one to two years, but it might not last five years because you need to clean it. And I think this is a, I mean, Patricia's asked another good question about the the scientific papers, and this is a a valid point with regards to the warranty as well. So everything that Data Direct have put into this product becoming available, the two products together, the warranties are null and void if you use anything else other other than what we say to use in in this product. Um, As far as um, proof, scientific papers, et cetera, are concerned, we obviously we can get all, we can give everybody what standards it lives up to. Yes, we've got that. So we've got documentation from, um, we don't manufacture the liquid. We get someone else that's been doing that for many years to do it. Um, and they do it uh, for but four different products. And we get one in particular for certain reasons from them. Um, and a lot of it's even just to do with shelf life and storage because this product you've got to store in certain ways. Um, and they've managed to find a, a way of just storing it for up to a year, which go back two years and you could only store this for up to a month. So it's they're pretty good. Um, as long as you use that product, the, the documentation stacks up. So the company, we, we use a Salvison product and they've done work with Bupa hospitals, care homes, and they've got recommendations and they've got case studies of it used in care homes and things. And they always boast that there's a record of they never got any COVID infections when everybody else did, because they were the only, and when they looked into why, Bupa found out the only difference was they were using the Salison product. So they've got a lot of documentation on their own. We've got a lot of documentation for ourselves. And then we've, and my background is in medical devices and things from a, a long time ago. And I've contacted, so I've got Lancet documents and I've got white papers um, and I've got things on surgical units that we, we've strived to always conform to. So we've got a way of using it, proving it. So as long as you use the products we know for work in it, then we can conform to the legal standards. If you just go and buy the cheapest form of HOCI from China, then you never quite know what you're getting. But I can guarantee you that it doesn't transport well unless you fly it over, you know, and it's on a slow boat from China. It won't like six weeks in a boat. So it won't work. It will produce, it'll produce a, a chlorine gas and a horrible smell. Mm-hmm. So as long as you use our recommended products, uh, life's good. Yeah, we can form and, and again, through us as well. Uh, and that's the thing. I mean, ultimately, all the, the warranty, et cetera, is all covered by us. So, it, you know, the products need to be used by us. And they're obviously at a, a very reasonable price as well. So uh, with, without that, um, yeah, it's um, it's something that needs to be used through us with the salvage sample. Yeah, this is a fraction of the cost. Sorry, Becky, but um, this is a fraction of the cost of foggers and other commercial use machines. Um, because we've teamed up with um, Prosoni, we've got a batch of these that we still have to modify, we still have to change, so we have no warranty with the manufacturer anymore. We have to pay and take all that on ourselves. And then we fit another part inside this. Um, so we've got all those things to do to this, but because of all that, we end up, we've got quite an inexpensive product because it's a mass produced product for a different market. These are meant to go in hotels, in hotel rooms and things um, in the Middle East. The warranty, as far as far as the warranty is concerned, is it a repair or swap? Um, 
my intention at the moment is a swap out because um, I'm pretty confident it's happy. It, it may end up being that we keep, we swap out and then we replace the French juice. So there's only one part in this that can break. Um, so we may end up swapping them out, but keeping a stock of the ones that we fixed and swap out with that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise we'll get people that will deliberately try and break it just to replace it with a new one. <laughs> So um, that's the kind of thoughts. But with certainly, with, if it's within the first year, it's swap out with a new one. Yeah. If it's into the extended warranty period, then it will be different. But we'll keep a buffer stock of replacement units in case. But we, there's not a lot that can break it. It's a pretty tried and tested technology. It is quite a difficult thing to break. Um, so as far as the five litres um, product's concerned, the five litres will last, if you use it one hour a night or one hour a day, it will last one month? If the room size is about 30 cubic metres. Okay. If it's a smaller room, um, 20 cubic, then it will last longer. I will be able to um, give people training as far as um, making sure that everything's spaced out in the right way as far as the, uh, you know, each smart mister in a room, if it's one's there in 30 metres squared, then another one needs to be yeah. at this point. I was, I've made a little video out of place and things, but in the manual, there's basically um, a formula to work out how to place it in the room, what to put it next to, what to keep it away from. Um, so you've got to keep it away from direct sunlight. So. If this was next to, say, your dentist's surgery and the reception area and there's a front door and the front door is constantly opening and sunlight comes in, then your sanitizer won't work there because it all just flows out the front door and sunlight comes in and hits it. Um, there's also scenarios on the downside of it, the negatives, that if you were to put it straight underneath, say, on the ceiling, there is um, a smoke detector or some uh, an intruder alarm and you put it directly underneath that if it turns on at four o'clock in the morning it creates a rapid temperature change and the sensor can get confused and think someone's broken into your premises and set an alarm off um, if you put it near plants that have green leaves it basically uh, makes them grow 10 times faster which could be a disadvantage uh, it really makes them grow so, but yes, there's a, a real simple formula for working out room. Just bit, break it down into one meter squared. We do the calculation for ceiling heights and things normally. Um, you multiply that by 0 0.03 and it tells you how long it should be on for. And um, if we need to do, absolutely, if we need to do training sessions for anyone on, on how, um, how to space things out, et cetera, um, then we're more than happy to do that. Uh, more than happy to spend a bit of time with people doing that. It's very simple, straightforward, and it's a bit of a trial and error. If you go as far as, say, getting one of these, if you put it in the far left-hand corner of an office and then walk around with it, you'll find that it doesn't get to a certain bit of the office, then you can just move this around until it does. You know, you've got a simple tool to do that. Or you can follow a formula based on, is there a radiator next to it? Is there a window next to it? Is the doors without you know, ventilation? Mm -hmm. So I can explain how all the technical bits work, but it's if you put it next to a hot radiator, it makes it work faster. So you need to reduce the time. If you put it next to a front door and that door is open and closed, or a drafty window and someone leaves a window open all night, then you need to leave it on for longer. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's rules to. Um, uh, Patricia just asked another really good question um, as far as is this a dealer only um, product? Now, the, the one thing that obviously during this last six months um, has been tougher for all dealers out there and Data Direct have, have, have noticed that with all of them. Um, and what we've been trying to do during this time is trying to find dealers, different things that they're able to sell and put to market, etc. So absolutely, this is, this is for you guys um, to, to be able to sell to your dealers. We're trying to find things that are, you know, you can you can actually um, sell, service, and maintain as you would do with a with a copy. You can put them on a, a monthly rental. Um, if there's extra machines in there, we can you know we can look at leasing. Um, there's all different types of variants of it because 
you know, the, the, the copier market, um, as much as we don't want to admit it, because of what's happened, is probably slightly on the decline at the moment. So trying to find different things that we can offer to you guys, for you to be able to sell to your customers, is really important at the moment. So this is the start of something that um, hopefully you can, you can add into your portfolio of products. Yeah. Uh, we'll try and control the cost of a dealer tries to put it on Amazon. Then they've got to stick to a pretty high RRP price or we'll stop them because we don't yeah. want it to be degraded. No. I just had a thought when you mentioned photocopiers. Um, it's not probably the right time, but next year, the Clean Air Act officially comes into Britain. It was supposed to come in this year. And as part of that, if you're in an office that has more than 16 people occupying the same space, then um, you have to guarantee the air quality and photocopiers produce ozone at one meter high, uh, which is technically a poison and that poison is deemed is not safe for the Clean Air Act. So it produces a particle <coughs> that is not great. A lot of the photocopiers that are three years old and newer already have an ozone filter built into them to stop the particulates going into the atmosphere. But they then replace that with a slight smell still. So if you print a big print run, you still smell it. Um, if you use this before the day before year and then photocopy something within 24 hours, all of the ozone becomes inert. So you don't actually, it will pass the quality control test. So you won't have any negative effect of using a photocopier. So if you've got an old photocopier that doesn't meet the new government, the world's um, health guidelines for clean air, then this will actually make it meet those because it will deodorize it. Um, and we also have a, sorry, I never mentioned this, we also have uh, a deionizer built into this. So we, we suck air through... On the back of it, there's a, a, an activated carbon and HEPA filter in the bottom of this. And through that, we, we pull air in and then we run it through uh, a UVC ultraviolet light. Um, and then we, so we, we've got clean air with the particles removed. Um, we can also add essential oils. We want to change the, the smell as well. But the air is pre cleaned going into this, but then we have a deionizer so that we control the ions in the air. Um, it's not a, you know, good enough to do a large space sort of thing, but it's a help. So any photocopiers that give out the ozone smell, it will help that to become inert and fall to the ground quicker as well. So if you're in the market of doing photocopiers and someone says, my photocopier smells, and then in the future, next year after April, they buy one of the wall-mounted air quality systems that shows you if it's legal or not legal, then your photocopy will make it fail. But if you have this in, it won't fail as well. Okay. Uh, the, the one question that I know everyone will be uh, thinking about is, uh, are there any negatives at all to, the, to using the Smart Mister? Um, the only negatives that I think of um, is that you can if you don't use it properly, you don't follow the instruction how to place it, you can set off some um, burglar alarms and set off some uh, air quality control alarms whilst it's doing it, and plants grow much quicker. Um, which, which we've noticed in our office. Um, our office in Bradford is turned into almost a, a jungle near me. <laughs> it really is quite dramatic. So it's actually used to uh, encourage certain types of plants to grow at 10 times their normal rate in commercial farming. Um, it's amazing. So if you buy a corn on the cob type thing, you buy corn, you've got this yeah, as part of it. So and it makes it grow silly faster. It really is quite a, an amazing difference. It's the, this is what's in your immune system. So if you cut your skin, um, HOCI is then rushed to that area it forms a crust around it um, and then deoxidizing it. it is what's in the immune system. The only other negative thing that I would say is that because this kind of, this mimics nature and it's like being by the seaside. So it's like um, if you were to take 
an ornamental horseshoe, say, um, iron that's not painted. This would encourage rust to run quicker. So if you've got an unpainted metal or you've not varnished your horseshoe, this would make it rust quicker. Just like if you'd taken it to Blackpool, you know, if you'd taken that same piece anywhere near the seaside, um, does the same thing because it, it removes the ozone and makes things rust quicker. Um, so the disadvantage is that it can make non-painted metals rust quicker if you don't clean it off. But, yeah. because of that, but people are already finding that when they're cleaning their office now, that they're cleaning so much with wet squirty chemicals that a lot of objects are already rusting quicker. So it's not as quick as that's going to be. So it's slightly negative, but it's manageable. Um, so it's just really that it's, um, I can't really think of many other ones. So as far as it, you know, so for like a large building for a large company um, who's got clean air systems, would it still be beneficial to have these uh, units or would the clean air system do the same job? No, it just means that the clean air system can work more efficiently and use less electricity, less energy. Up. Okay. Well, you're pre-cleaning the air so that when it gets to the clean air system, which generally work on plasma torch, so they have a um, say um, an, a deionizer or an ionizer, and then type HEPA filters, and then they would have UVC lights, and then some of them have titanium dioxide that scrub the air. So all of those things would then be working on pre-cleaned air. So it would be much more efficient. Um, we did a, a test with a, a, a 2,000 pounds air monitoring kit. Uh, and we have one of these upstairs and one, we don't have one downstairs. And I did a, a swap test and an air test of the one downstairs. And to pass a clean air, um, if you if you wanted to make a clean room for surgical equipment, you've got to get a score of four. I know it's just a number, but you've got to get a score of four on a scale. Mm -hmm. um, and that's surgically clean, that's hard to do. A normal office on a clean air system has to be 16 on the same scale. So to do surgery work, it's got to be four. Um, and after using this, I don't know if it's settled down, this drops down to two. So we've actually managed to get the air to two. So your clean air system would be cleaning clean air. So therefore it'd use less energy and work more efficiently. And it'd be less maintenance and less hassles. It doesn't replace the clean air system. It just means that you've taken mushroom spores out, you've taken grease out of the air, you've taken out spores, um, you've taken out viruses before it gets to the clean air system. Cool. So I'll, I'll put one more question to you, Ray, and then we'll, we'll open it up to everybody uh, just in case there's any uh, more questions to ask. But um, Terry asked, um, as far as if somebody's got asthma, um, how would it affect them? So the quick answer is if you set it going at four o'clock in the morning and it's finished by five, it's all settled on your desk surfaces and your bookshelves and everything. So it's not in the air. Therefore, um, people with asthma, you'll end up with a clean air score of two to four. So it's better than it would have been. So it's really helpful to them. If you were to turn it on and like, um, if I turn this on right now and I sit there and breathe it all in and I had pleurisy, so I've got lung-related problems. Um, it clears my um, windpipes. If you've got asthma, the recommendation is, because we're not doctors and can't recommend things, then don't breathe this in in real time. Yeah. So if the particles go into what's there becoming about 400 and above, don't sit and breathe it in. The reality is that it's sold as an asthma... Um, medicine with a nebulizer that a little thing is on the side and you breathe it in, but it's under a controlled environment. So it's, if you've got asthma, don't run it in real time, but if you come into the office in the morning, it's already settled, it's not got the fog. But if I sit and breathe all that in, then it actually opens my lungs up. Um, so it's good. <laughs> it's Legally, if you ever ask the question, you've got to respond. If you've got asthma, seek medical advice. Don't do this because it's all as a medicine for asthma. Okay. Yeah. Cool. cool.
Cool. So we'll 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 wrap it up there. And what we'll do is we'll we'll open the forum up to everybody. If that's all right with you, Stuart, if you could do that for us. Have anyone's got any questions that they'd like to ask? Yeah, I've got a question. Um, <clears throat> the main thing for me, obviously, uh, trying to put it out to customers would be um, the marketing material that we've got or the information that we've got currently is is in quite short supply. Is there is there any any material that we can use to, to really push this with customers? Um, I sent some more off to a marketing guy last night. Um, I'm working on it hard to try and produce. So... We've done documents on health benefits and skincare. I've started to do documents on um, sales thing that are generic without our names and companies and things on it. So I started to do it and I've, I've made a little video. We've got an NHS video that shows you how it's used in a hospital. Um, so there's a bunch of things coming through the pipeline. I just haven't finished it yet. Cool. We'll, we'll, we'll get those, uh, we'll get some more marketing material uh, to get you guys as soon as possible. Yeah, if we, yeah, if we could uh, possibly get a hold of, um, or we sent the links for the videos as well, yeah. um, that, would, that would be a mass, massive benefit if possible, yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll make sure that everyone that's on on here today will get all the, the links across to, to the videos, etc., and everything that's... Uh, um, that, that we've got available for everybody. If there's anything that anyone does want that they think of after this as well, please by all means just drop either your account manager or Ray or me an email, and we'll and we'll absolutely um, get on it. Because what we're trying to do, like I said previously, is help you guys to sell something um, extra into your uh, into your customers. Is there an RRP on this product? We've got a, we've got an SSP on it, um, yeah. which I. I off the top of my head, I'm not 100% sure, but I will come back to you on that one. Um, yeah, I'll come back to you on that one. Thank you. Can I, can I also ask as well, I did put it in the questions there as well. Uh, my supplier currently of, um, of we have a, a product that we're putting out there. Um, he has said that you're not supposed to mention COVID-19, whereas you you have got it on your literature. What What's your take on that, Ray? Is what... So... Um, COVID, as far as regulations go, COVID-19 doesn't exist. Um, so you can't mention it in a document that can be used in law uh, because we haven't defined what COVID-19 is and we're already on to COVID-21 that's getting announced in February next year. Mm -hmm. so the D stands, in COVID, the D stands for disease, the 19 stands for the, the date that it was announced. It mutated, and then we have the COVID-20, which they're just going to ignore. And then the COVID-21, which is the one that gives you um, diarrhea um, and some other related problems, they're going to talk about. So if we mention COVID-19, the time we've got as far as all of the proof and documentation and lab reports, we're into COVID-21. So it's kind of pointless mentioning 19. Why we do 19 on there is that there is NHS and others have done work on COVID-19 and proving that if you follow um, a BS number, you can guarantee to kill COVID-19 off in one second. So because we've got that on the documentation and because that is the buzzword at the minute, kind of it's easy enough to quote because we've got it on lab reports and we've got it on white papers and we've got it on NHS videos and people talking about it. Um, but COVID is just one of uh, viruses. There isn't a COVID-19 test on the market yet. It doesn't exist. So when you go into a hospital and you ask for a COVID-19 test, you actually get a SARS virus test and you get two others that do three tests to work out false positives and negatives. Um, so the what this is, it's a broad spectrum disinfectant which uses salt um, and electrolyzed water. So this one will kill any type of virus or any type of fungus or spores because it, it, it disrupts it. It removes the ATP, it removes the thing that all 100% of all viruses 
that are um, that are exposed to air basically need. So we mention it because we've got physical proof that it's it kills 19 and 21 as well. So we're not going to get sued by some these leaflets out. No, no, because we can basically pass that down the line to documentation. Yeah. And when COVID-21 gets announced, we can pass that down the line as well. And yeah. if you bring a COVID-19 to 21 vial in with you and put it into the room, yeah, and then put a, a fluorothermal camera on it, you can watch the life force of it being pulled away in real time. So that's again where with with the um, the machine that you've got there as well, Reg. Um, above, yeah, which is which is important because this is a I think this could be an extra sales tool for all of you when you're actually going in and selling it. If you use one of these machines with it and show what the air is like now and what the air like air becomes once you've actually turned the smart mister on, it's it, it it proves to the customer that they can see what's happening. Yeah, we're trying not so although this does sanitize air. We're trying not to promote it as an air sanitizer. It's a surface sanitizer. So you're still, all of the surfaces that you touch, et cetera, like a door handle, like a desk, like a light switch, all of those things are clean surfaces that are void of the building blocks of life. So no virus can survive on it. So that's what we do. It does sanitize the air, but you can't get any documentation and proof and to try and get a, a, a BS number or a European number that says conform to this standard to sanitise air is impossible because they don't come out until next year. So just, just not talking about it as a sanitizer because we can't do the, the medical proof and the backup for the lawyers. So um, give it another six months to a year and we'll be one of the first to have that because I'm on top of it now. So what we'll do as well is we'll make sure that the um, all machines we, we get across to all of you so that you can see exactly what you know what you can take to your customer to, to sell um, with the literature etc on, on all of those. I think we'll also send through the, um, the 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 instruction manual that you've got there as well so that everyone can have a read of how to set them up etc. Uh, so we'll send that through to everybody. Uh, I don't know if anyone else has got any more questions before we um, close it off. I've, I've just got one. The and I apologise if I missed this in the presentation. Does does the sensor that come with the machine? Yeah. Yes, yeah. it does. Oh, sorry. This you mean the the back sensor or this one? The, the smaller sensor. Uh, the one on top of the machine. That yeah, uh, that one. Yeah. Um, not unless Becky tells me to ship those with everyone, which yeah. I think she should. I'm starting to think it'd be a good idea. Yeah. Um, we do two of these. We do a handheld one. And then we do a wall-mounted one with a data logger. Um, right. And there... See, this is the machine that I was thinking that you need to tell everyone about, because right? I think that's the sales tool as well. It's an extra sales tool. Very much so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I love this. Um, so we've got a, a £2,000 version of this, and I still use this more than the £2,000 one, because it's just so simple. Um, and this is this is what I was talking about is what the information that I think all you guys need to be able to take into customers with you mm -hmm. to, to to show them what's going on within their building so we can get some we can put some prices because we do actually supply these sensors as well don't we yeah so we can give you some information on those as well when got, you take you take a sensor in and measure some of their surfaces and say well this is why you need this machine don't you exactly so hold on so this one measures the air um, side of things. So what you use this for is you turn this on in one corner and walk around the building and go, it's reaching here, it's reaching here, or oh, it's not reaching here. And you can, it doesn't swab the surface and then tell you how dirty the surface is. That's what these ones are for. Yeah. So it, this one is a tool that allows you to know that this is turned on and working and it's reaching all those areas. Mm. Yeah, and um, this one is clinical report. This is what used to at least spend two thousand pounds every time until we invested in buying the machines ourselves. Um, does so we, we take this out. I don't really want to use this one because of will ruin it. Um, hold on, I've got another one. So you basically on this one you take out of here, you swab 
uh, the surface of something. Yeah, uh, you do it in a pattern, um, and then you break the the vial, click, shake it like crazy, stick it into the bench machine, and then it gives you a score whether you've passed or failed, and then it breaks it down into. If you want, you can look for ATP, formaldehydes, um, skin problems, cancers, all sorts of stuff. So this one is the one that if you want to prove that you're dirty and you need to be cleaned properly, and this one proves that if you use this, it's getting to all the areas. And right now, if that's over 114, if that's flashing over 114, it's basically, it's exactly twice the government's recommended level of sanitizer in the air. So right now, if I wanted to have a person sitting across from me and under the one meter rule limit and breathing on me, I can guarantee you that they can't put a virus into my breath. I wouldn't have to wear a mask. But um, the problem is that because the Clean Air Act isn't official, you can't legislate on that. So some lawyer somewhere will sue you. Um, but if that figures over there, which is 4.7 milliliters per, it's so many particles of the product in the air from the density. Um, you're safe, you're into the level where it's actively destroying any funguses, viruses, spores in this air. So if anybody breathes, any of those ever, it's doing so. And that's so, what's really important, I think, for everyone, isn't it? That, you know, this is the way it's going to be for a long time now. You know, we want people to get back into offices and start using them or schools, et cetera, et cetera. But the fact that a machine like this can be working at the same time and, you know, wouldn't necessarily have to wear a mask, obviously people would, but um, yeah, but really, really important. Um, great sales tool as well. Um, anybody else got any questions or are we um, all right to close up and then we'll, uh, if, if you've got it, if you need any more information, you can either, like I say, email myself or Ray, or there's also info at data-direct.co.uk which if you've got any extra questions uh, to ask, we'll make sure we're directed to Ray as well. Um, yeah, I've just got, just got a quick one on what Ray was just saying in regards to, to sort of it killing any viruses and not being able to get to yourself. I'm just picking up on something you said a little bit earlier in the, in, in the presentation regarding the amount of time that it lasts. So effectively, if it goes on for an hour in the morning or an hour in the evening, did you say that it potentially give you the same protection for sort of up to 14 hours in a, a normal environment? Um, to, to match the legal requirements, it's got to persist in the air at so many particles per million um, to be saved. It's got to persist for up to one hour only. So to get to the legal limits, um, to give you an idea, this room that I'm in now doesn't have any windows. It's only got a, a door and it doesn't vent out to the outside world. I turned this on for the same time as I've done today. So maybe one minute to two minutes maximum. And when I came in this morning, there was 45 million particles in the air. So it was still in the air uh, 24 hours later. In cheese production, the fog in um, a Monday and then the fog in a Wednesday and then the fog in the Friday. Um, they don't do it every day because it persists in the air, but there's not people coming and going and air changes. The front door is not open, the wind's blowing through. So in an office, people expect there to be fresh air delivered in a constant basis. So it won't persist for as long because you're replacing it with air from the outside world. And when the Clean Air Act hits, you legally have to have so many litres of fresh air for the cubic volume going through. So this will be down to, it's not left in the air. If you didn't change the air, you get 14 hours of active use. And it would still be in the air 40 hours later. But every surface you touch, it is in that surface and will be there until you remove that dust. So like three months later, it'll be there. Actively to kill a virus within one second, uh, the answer is 14 hours on a surface. But in air, it's one hour, if that answers okay. it. Brilliant. Thank you. So I hope everyone's found uh, today's session informative.
Mm. Um, and like I say, if you want any more information, info at data-direct.co.uk or get in touch with the account manager and we'll get back to you with the um, SSPs, etc. cetera, um, for you guys. But thank you all so much for coming on. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank and you. take care, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye. 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 Bye